Jim Rohn once famously said, the bigger the why, the easier the how. So once you get your why right, it becomes a lot easier to get through your project. Welcome to Tapping Creativity, a podcast for the creative community. Yes, it's a podcast for you. Whether you're looking for insight, inspiration, or community, you found yourself in the right place. My name is Matthew Temple. I am the host. And on this podcast, we go into questions, inspirations, challenges of the creative process. There, it's about connecting with other artists, hearing what other people are struggling with, their wins, their challenges. If you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe, follow, share. If you really like what you hear, give us a thumbs up or give us some kind of review. And with that, let's hop into this week's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Tapping Creativity. This is exciting. This is really sort of episode one of the nine P's for powerful and effective creating. If you were here last week, you know that we are going to really take the next nine episodes and dive into what I laid out in the Creatives Handbook over time, really over the last really three years since I wrote the book. And I've been working with this with students and clients and even going back and revisiting these processes myself. I've been growing and evolving how this works. I'm really excited about it. And I'm excited to bring this here on the podcast as a basically a nine episode mini course. We're launching this right after the summer, uh, sort of late summer. As we're kind of looking into the beginning, sort of the beginning of the fall, there's something that's always so profound to me when the world starts to, at least in the northern hemisphere, kind of starts to turn inward. Things get colder, you know, the nights get shorter, and you know, there's this almost as though there's a there's a, a kind of a creative energy that is being fostered when that sort of enjoyment of being outside and all of all of the kind of carefreeness of spring and summer begins to retreat. So it's really a perfect time to be diving right in. And so if you did not listen to last week's and you want to go back just to really understand what we're doing, go ahead. Now's your now's your chance. And uh, and if not, we're gonna jump right in. So the P number one is purpose. And finding our purpose is just so essential. Uh, I I can't even stress it enough. The thing is, is that the process of creating is hard. It's a challenge. And I mean, it should be fun. It should be enjoyable, but it's a challenge. And when I say fun or enjoyable, I don't mean like vacation fun. I mean more travel or adventure fun. So if you've ever uh, been on a really nice vacation, you go somewhere, you just vacation is a relaxation. It's letting things go. It's uh, a trip to Maui where you kind of plant your butt in the sand and enjoy, relax, have some pina coladas. That is, you know, there's that's vacation fun, which is wonderful. And there's a lot of great things to be said for vacation fun. I have found very few people who find the creative process is that kind of fun. The kind of fun that uh, I'm talking about is sort of adventure fun. If you've ever walked the Camino de Santiago, it's depending on where you start, it's in the vicinity of 500 miles, particularly if you make it all the way out to Finisterre. That incredible fun could be a word to describe it, but certainly not vacation fun. You know, backpacking in the wilderness, wonderful, challenging, fun, but not quite vacation fun. A little bit more like creation fun. (laughs) So creating is definitely that sort of adventure fun, which is wonderful. And it makes sense because as artists and as creatives, we are adventurers. We are explorers. We are discoverers. And when you get to the end and you read stories about the discoverers, it sounds so romantic. But to be out there to to be weathering the difficult storms, the weather, frostbite, whatever it is, it's not always, it's not always fun in that in that way. But it is so rewarding, and that's what we do here. Now, why do I say that? Why am I relating that to purpose? Well, because purpose is is that wellspring from which we can derive energy when things get challenging. 
And I remember uh, when I was a kid, I read a story about a woman who lifted a car up. And if you think about it, I don't know many women who can just lift a car, and you probably don't either. But this woman had a purpose that was so strong that she was able to do it. The purpose was her child. Now, lifting a car for this woman was probably impossible. If her kid had jokingly said the day before in the parking lot, hey, mom, I, I want to see you pick up that car, she would have probably laughed. I can't do that. But the purpose becomes so powerful that the impossible becomes possible. And so this is this what, what we're going to be, be doing here in this week is going back to the purpose. Now, a lot of us know what our purpose is. You say, why do I want to do this? You know, it's something I've wanted to do forever. Not really a reason. Wanting to do something forever is not a reason. It can go back to a moment in, in time. It can be, you know, I worked with a woman who wanted to write a story that was based on her own life and certain challenges that she had within her family structure, believing that, that by sharing her story, she would be able to help others. That can also be a strong purpose. It may not be a strong enough purpose, but what I want to, you know, to you to take this moment is not only what is my purpose that I've always jumped back to, but what's beyond that first like quick answer. And if you know what the answer is, then great. And if you don't know what the answer is, then this is a perfectly good time to be getting into that. So the other thing too, is that your why isn't necessarily going to be static or one thing. So what I mean by that is as you begin working on a project, the reasons for it may change and that's great. That's okay. Everything in the creative process is an iterative process. So we're going to touch on that idea of iteration pretty regularly throughout the next nine weeks. But one thing to really sort of focus on is that the reason why I wanted to be a writer when I was 12 and I started the, down this path becomes very different than when I'm 21, very different when I'm 31, 41, etc. Each of these steps along our way, things are going to evolve and also once we begin to uncover. So interestingly, the woman that I mentioned before who wanted to write this book had been wanting to write it for 10 years. And one reason why I offered to work with her was that to me, wanting to do something for 10 years and not doing it reeks of tragedy, particularly when the opportunities are there. So it wasn't like uh, she wasn't physically able or didn't have the time or the resources or whatever. There was this other blockage. The fascinating thing was her reason for wanting to do it at a certain point wasn't actually sufficient because it wasn't to help others. She wanted to do it to help herself help herself actually go in and tell some of these family stories in order to release the power that they had over her. And once she did, she never finished the book. She didn't even want to. She's like, I don't even want to write a book anymore. And to me, that wasn't a failure. To me, that was a success. It was a success because if you think you want to do something, she could have gone 30 years with that feeling of regret or sadness or disappointment in herself because there was something she wanted to do, something she felt necessary for her life and didn't do it. However, as soon as she started to do it, she realized, oh, my reason for wanting to do this was not to help others. It was to help myself. And I've done that. I've helped myself. And now I get to put that aside. I don't need to write my family story in order to heal or express my creativity. I actually get to discover the next thing that I'm going to do. So these are the understanding where the whys are so important and also allowing that to iterate. When I made Hardball the Girls of Summer, again, it was really personal. I had three daughters who were playing baseball and the challenges that they were facing, I just want to play baseball. I don't want to be the only girl out on the team or I don't want to be treated differently when I'm playing because I'm a girl instead of a boy, like all these things. And so there was a very personal connection that I had. But then eventually it didn't become about my daughters anymore because they were not playing professional ball, you know, or playing for the U.S. women's national team. And then as I got into that story, it became about, you know, bringing that entire story to life, the sto these amazing hero stories. And then ultimately, it also became about me crafting a story out of really challenging raw material. 
So then it also became an obligation to these women while also this purpose for me of expressing something that's so vital to me, equality, which is so vital to be able to express that artistically. So that also very much, very much shifted. Now, only you can really know what your purpose is for why you want to tackle your project. And what I want you to work on this this week is a little bit of journaling on this topic. Now, if it's because I want to be rich or famous, that's going to fizzle out pretty fast. That you know, your chances are pretty slim, and then it's really just kind of, it's a selfish motive, um, which doesn't necessarily going to help you work your way through the challenging times. You know, this is a, a, a a favorite book of mine, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. It's the search for meaning, for purpose, that allowed him to survive several uh, Nazi concentration camps, including Auschwitz. So it was the search for meaning. Another way to do that is it's the purpose. Why am I doing this? At some point, you might be, you know what, I, I want to be able to take my wife out to dinner on a regular basis and not have to worry about whether or not I can afford it. I'm like, that's that could also be okay. It's going to be, you know, that, I mean, that, those are things to be a part of it. I don't censor yourself when you're putting stuff out there, but continue to dig deeper. What are some, what are the things that's going to keep you going when you find that you are, you know, you're exhausted because you're, you know, maybe you're working a day job and, or maybe you're working less of a day job so you can work on this project. So you have less money. Um, and or you're exhausted because if you're going to actually be working on your project and you've got a day job or you've got kids, you're getting up at 5.30 in the morning, 5 in the morning, 4.30, just to get some work done. So the, the pieces that are going to keep you going, um, but I want you to kind of get through that, all of those pieces. Like I said, if it's just about fame and fortune, there are better ways to make, make money. If you really want to be rich and I don't know about famous, but if you want to be rich, the life of a creative is not the surest bet or the clearest path to getting there. Sometimes it can be the best path to uh, soothe your need for validation. Um, you know, and again, those can some of those things can be okay. Like I actually worked with somebody once who also was very, very much. It became impossible to actually do the work because too much of it was about validation, about proving that I'm worthy. That wasn't ever going to hold enough weight to help her get across the finish line. So in this week's worksheet, we're going to be looking at finding the why. And we're going to go over what those questions are. So if you're just listening and you want to pause and ponder, I always say write stuff down. Writing things down brings that clarity that you absolutely need. Your brain is way too good at filling in gaps in your thinking to where you think, oh, I get this, or I understand this, or I'm really clear. And then your brain is just so good at filling in those blank spots. But as soon as you start writing it down, this is why people don't like to write stuff down. You start writing it and then you realize, oh, wait, it's not as good as I thought it was. I'd rather stay in my brain where it's not down on paper because in my brain, it's seems great. And I'm going to win an Oscar from this project, but on paper, it's not as good on paper. So therefore I'd rather keep it in my brain. Well, we got to get it down on paper, including your why. Just knowing your why in your brain is not good enough. You've got to put it on paper. However, I know this is also a podcast, so you may be driving, so that's okay. You can go ahead and think about it, but make sure you take the time to actually write it down later. Uh, and if you need to use your phone and say, hey, Siri, or hey, whoever, and give me a reminder to do this when I get home, do whatever you need to do. Write it down. Because here's the thing. As we're going into this worksheet, Jim Rohn once famously said, the bigger the why, the easier the how. So once you get your why right, it becomes a lot easier to get through your project. Now, if Jim Rohn is right, you're going to have the juice that you need once you finish this to get through the challenging times ahead. Okay, so let's get clear on the why. Question number one, when did you feel the most alive recently or the last time? So when was the last time that you felt most alive? What were you doing? And can you name why it felt so good? That's number two. Number three is who is the person or the people in your life 
who have inspired you, a teacher, a random friend who gave you an unexpected invitation or gift that impacted you. And that one's really kind of fun. You can go all the way back. Some teacher, this like these little things. Like I have a, a guy who I know, barely an acquaintance. So a few years ago, I found him on Facebook and he barely remembered me, but he changed my life. When I was in fifth grade, it was my second year being in a new school in Denver and everyone played football in recess and I didn't know how to play football. And uh, Matt Jarebker decided that for whatever reason, he was going to start picking me first, randomly. I was always the last one picked. And then randomly, I started being the first one picked. And he started targeting me with balls. Did he see something in me? I, I can't answer that question. Totally inspired me. Not a necessarily a creative story. Uh, I have of quite a few of those, but anything the somebody that inspired you, uh, you know, whatever that was. And that's why I say some of these like unexpected pieces. I want you to, because this is not about what inspired me creatively. It's about what inspires you as a human being that connects you deeply to that why. I want you to think about and then write what is it about that person or those people who inspire you. And then is there someone who makes you feel envious? Okay, that's kind of the other side of this. Someone who makes you feel envious. Who are they? Why do they make you feel that way? And what happened? Okay, now if you're going to write what happened, be clear. Avoid your feelings or your interpretation about it and just write what happened. Not like so-and-so was mean to me, but so-and-so said that my painting of a giraffe looked like a... Tyrannosaurus Rex. That would be what they actually said. The way I felt about it might be, they think I'm a bad artist. Not at all what they said. That's not what they said. That's the way I interpreted it. Okay. Uh, they weren't speaking meanly. Uh, their tone of voice is also an interpretation. So just be very, very clear. And then lastly, I want you to think about why you want to create this project. And if you're not clear on the project, we're going to get into that next uh, next week. So you can hold that one if you want. But if you've got a project or a few projects, or you're trying to figure out, oh, I've got a bunch of different things, we're going to get into that. That'll really be next week's episode. But go ahead and you can think if there's something that's clear, some things like, why? Why do you want to do this or these projects? Or why do you want to do any project? Why are you still listening to this dang podcast 20 minutes later? That's the questions. Okay, you'll find that worksheet in the show notes. I will see you next time. We're doing these every couple of weeks. So uh, that gives you two weeks to work on this, uh, to really get clear on the why. And uh, then we'll jump into the what, into your project, into the second P of a powerful and effective creating next week. In the meantime, have a ton of fun. Thoughts, questions, anything, reach out to me, Matthew at MatthewCTemple.com. I'm pretty good at responding to emails. If you message me on Instagram at Matthew C. Temple, Facebook at Matthew C. Temple Official, uh, Twitter at Matthew C. Temple, uh, you know, I, I, I really try to make an effort to get back to people. If you really want to do a one-on-one -on -one session, I always have just a few little slots available. Um, you can reach out to me or visit MatthewCTemple.com forward slash book that is to book a time if i have any times they'll be up there and you we just might get a chance to work uh like on a session together just absolutely no cost always try to do that with a few people every once in a while try and keep some time open so there you have it okay see you next time have a beautiful beautiful couple weeks of discovering the why if you are looking for additional inspiration you can check out some of the blogs on matthewctemple.com forward slash blog. Uh, you can grab a copy of the Creatives Handbook if you would so like your own physical or digital copy. And if you're looking for something that has my name nowhere near it, uh, Victor Frangel's Man's Search for Meaning, the first portion of this book about his experience, will certainly give you some inspiration into why. I also might have a few other resources on why in the show notes. I'll try and get to that. In the meantime, see you next time. Tapping Creativity is brought to you in part by We Strive, a nonprofit organization that works to lead the world towards stronger, healthier, and more sustainable community. We Strive is currently at an exciting juncture in that coming out of the pandemic, it is in a place of looking to see how can it now, as a established organization, be of greatest support to the creative communities as well as communities who are striving in any way they know how to engage in co-creating a better world. If you're interested in learning more, visit westrive.org.